This is Dr. Andrew Jones. In this edition of Energy Secrets, I'm going to show you how to finally stop your dog's recurring ear infection naturally at home. In today's video, I'm featuring Pearl. Many of you know her. She was probably Lewis's best buddy. He, she was about a year old, she's about a year older than Lewis. So where where we first lived, when, when Lewis, I first brought Lewis home as a puppy, Pearl was our immediate neighbor. Or Wes and Abby were our immediate neighbors, and Pearl was their dog. She was just over a year, this super playful lab. And, you know, Lewis and her have been buddies for, I mean, Lewis's entire life, 13 and a half years. Um, as most of you know, Lewis died, unfortunately, about three weeks ago. Um, and I'm, Pearl doesn't know that. She was pretty excited to see me when I went to pick her up today. And then she sort of looked around and there's no Lewis. Um, her not just for the people in our lives too, the dogs too. A little bit about ear infections in general and recurring ear infections. Um, and so a couple of big points I want to make. First of all, most ear infections in dogs have an under, underlying allergic basis to them. Um, that's a, sort of one big, big principle. Majority of ear infections in dogs, the, the primary thing that is causing the actual infection within that ear is yeast. It's a black waxy debris. So it looks like black debris. Um, I would have many clients come in and they, they thought their dog had ear mites. 95% of the time there's a black debris within your dog's ear. It's likely yeast. The third big principle I want to make in terms of, of you guys, first of all, treating that ear infection, and secondly, preventing it from coming back, is that for most of our dogs, it has been ongoing for a period of time. So what, what's happened is that we, more often than not, we have a dog with an underlying allergy. They've had re recurring bouts of these infected ears. The actual ear canals themselves get a little bit swollen and thickened, producing poor airflow, making them more prone to reinfection. So there isn't sort of one like simple, easy thing, that's it. You're done. I'm gonna give you one magic pill, it's not gonna go away, it's not like that. But if you follow some of the principles I'm gonna suggest in this video, you really can go a long way in, in terms of finally stopping your dog's recurring ear infection, and you know, easily, safely managing them at home, and potentially, actually, you know, ultimately curing that ear infection. So in this video, I'm jumping right into treating the ear infection, and then what you can give to help prevent this infection from coming back. Uh, so the most, most important thing I'm finding is something that's going to topically treat the yeast, potentially the bacteria, and, and also break down some of that de debris so you can get that out of the ear. Uh, so a couple of things for you that I, I want to suggest. First of all, this is I've actually made myself up a batch of green tea. Um, in many cases in the past, people will suggest water is the basis. I actually think green tea is a much better idea. It's, an, it's antibacterial, um, may deal with some of that fungi, some of that yeast that could be present in the ear. Um, so I've made up a batch of green tea. You can just make a cup of green tea with a tea bag of green tea. I'm going to put in just under a cup. I'm actually going to put in here. That's it. Three, I'm just put, almost putting just over three quarters of a cup or 200 mils of green tea in this cup here. And then the thing that is really anti-yeast and also antibacterial is this vinegar, apple, apple cider vinegar. But I'm making a, a more dilute so solution because I'm using the green tea so it's often less irritating. So I'm going to put in here is three tablespoons, you can see me here, of the apple cider vinegar. One, two, three. So now I've made myself a cup of this ear cleansing, ear medicating, treating solution. So there it is. So I've got a syringe here and I've drawn about 10 mils, uh, which is about two, two teaspoons of the green tea apple cider vinegar concentration. And this is something which, you know, would comfortably last you at least two to three weeks. It's something where you can make it up ahead of time. Just just keep it uh, in, the, in the fridge. So cooler and then just warm it up before you treat your dog with it as far as cleansing or you know, treating the infection. So the next thing, because what you want to do is then in here, it's a pearl, and I've got Pearl's head tipped to the side, you're actually seat that syringe into this, this part, the vertical ear canal, 
and squirt in most of that fluid. You want to fill up her ear. So I'm squishing it in here. And then what you want to do <clears throat> is rub the base of the ear really well so you can hear it squishing. And then wipe the excess out with, this, with either a cotton ball or this, what I've got, this little 2x2 two two gauze. So we're doing two things here. One, we're cleaning that debris, and secondly, we're actually treating probably that yeast ear infection. So if we're treating it all with a yeast ear infection, you can safely do that twice a day for five to seven days. If your dog has red open wounds, I don't want you to be using uh, the acetic acid. I don't, I don't want you to be using the apple cider vinegar. What I want you to do is use something more soothing. Um, so what you could do is just use this, just use the green tea as a flush. The next thing I want to show you guys is something I just, just went and picked up. Um, it's an over-the-counter antifungal cream. It's called, here it is, Clotrimazole. Um, you might find it as a brand name such as Monistat or Caniston. This is an antifungal that's used for athlete's foot um, and used for, topically for ringworm. So it's pretty inexpensive, just about $10. And this large tube would probably last you a year. So this is the, the actual antifungal and many most of the veterinary medications, the topical ear ear medications. And you know, honestly, you're probably paying thirty dollars for that you know, little teeny section. We can get this giant tube of the exact same medication for ten dollars, which would last you a year. So if and in most cases, this would be when we're specifically treating a dog that has a yeast ear infection. So if your dog has that sort of black looking waxy debris, then this is what you could use. And it's a lot safer than using the veterinary ones which have a combination sort of anti-inflammatory, also antibacterial. Because you're just using what, what you need to use to treat the problem in your dog, not sort of over medicating them. So here it is here, it's just in the easy dispense tube, and I would just Tilt your dog's per, your dog's ear back as I'm tilting pearls or pin up back, and just squirt just enough in to fill up part of that ear canal. Just rub the base of the ear really well to work its way in. You hear it squishing, and often I found in veterinary practice, you know, these yeast infections would, especially with this medication, would clear up in sort of three to five days. Now I want you to also give something that's going to help deal with some of the pain and inflammation. Uh, especially in these guys that have underlying allergies and re these recurring ear infections. Uh, so the safest herb that you could look at giving um, is this one here. It's curcumin. So it's for 95% curcuminoids. See it there. And I'll put a description under the video description so you're clear as to what it is and how to get it. So here it is, the 95% curcuminoids. We're looking at a dog dose of 100 milligrams for 10 pounds of body weight daily. So something like pearl. And you, you could you would start her on two of these a day and, and this would be especially when she's got a big ear flare-up you're wanting to give her something to help take down that inflammation naturally that's not a steroid and the advantage of using these as capsules is that curcumin especially the 95 I can get the bottle open the 95% curcuminoids or the curcumin it's isolated from the, the spice turmeric stains everything a bright bright orange and I think I'll just open it up so you can see it here. As you can see, there it is, but it's the orange capsule. So because it's in the capsulated form, you don't have to get yourself orange and everybody else all orange. So you can either just, you know, hide it in a little bit of your dog's food and get him or her to eat it that way. I'm pretty sure, per I know Pearl would happily eat that. And if, if our dogs have an underlying allergy, this would be very beneficial for them. So it's, it's a real effective natural anti-inflammatory that's very safe as well as taking down that inflammation that's within the ear canal itself. First of all, all of these guys, um, any of these dogs that have recurring ear infections, you need to get your dog on higher doses of an essential fatty acid. The easiest way to do it and least expensive is use this. This here it is here, flax oil. You know, it's pretty expensive. You know, this is over $10 for this bottle. It's a 100 ml bottle or two cups of flax oil. And we're looking at a flax oil dose so something like pearl here, and I'm dosing these dogs at 1,000 milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight daily, which would equate to pearl getting you know, two tablespoons a day. And the last big thing is ensuring that you're gonna do a hypoallergenic food trial. That means feeding your dog, I'm going for a minimum of six week trial with a unique protein source and a unique carbohydrate, something they haven't been on before. Also eliminating any type of treats, you're just sticking with the dog food as a treat, 
or something, you know, such as that protein. For instance, this food here is a, is a duck and potato, that would be fine. You've got a unique protein, a unique carbohydrate, something simple your dog has never been on before. And I'm just encouraging all of you, if you've got a dog with a re recurring ear infection, really, really do a proper food trial. Think of all the other things your dog eats, and just ensure that they don't, don't eat anything else for a six week, six week period of time minimum, just to see, because it wouldn't be great if you just feed that food, you eliminate what your dog is eating, as far as food-wise, eliminate the food allergen in the first place, and the ear infection clears up. And I've seen this with many, many clients. So I'm just encouraging you to do that as well. Thank you guys for watching this edition of Entering Secrets. Uh, thank you, Pearl, for being our model dog. She's an awesome dog. It's sure good to see her. I haven't seen her since Lewis died. If you've yet to do so, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. You can do that by clicking that little circle just above me. And then go ahead, click that link in the box below. I can send you my free books on videos and how to heal your dogs at home with my top natural remedies.